What is going on everyone? This video is a tutorial on how to configure an AWS step function to run glue jobs and wait for it to be completed before invoking another step in your state machine. Step functions are a great way to orchestrate glue jobs as well as trigger other AWS processes such as trigger Lambda jobs or writing to an SNS topic. I made this video because a lot of data engineers are looking to use step functions and some are having difficulty implementing this successfully. All right, so on my screen here, I'm in an AWS Glue Studio job that I just created. What it's doing is reading data from an AWS S3 bucket. So I'm reading from the data catalog, which has customer information. I then have a transform node, which is basically dropping three fields and then writing this back to S3 as a JSON file. All right, so let's head over to the step function service to create a new state machine that will trigger this ETL job from AWS Glue and send an email notification via SNS when it's complete. All right, so I'm in the AWS Step Function service. I'm going to go to State Machines, and we're going to create a new state machine. And there's a new easy way to design step function workflows, and it's a lot simpler. So we're going to design it through the visual interface. And for type, I'm going to choose Standard and hit Next. All right, now we can drag and drop the steps we need to create our state machine. So under actions, so for our first step to invoke our AWS glue job, we're going to use this start job run. You might see it in the most popular section. However, if you search glue, it will also appear as well under AWS glue start job run. So we're just going to add that to the canvas. Great. So the next step, we need to pass the job name under the API parameter for this job name key. So by default, this is not the job that I created. We're just going to have to fill this out. So in order to find the job name, I go back to the AWS Glue service. Under the Jobs tab, if you go under your jobs, you can find it under job name. So mine is called Transform Customer Data. So I'm just going to copy that. And we're just going to paste that into the job name here. Make sure there's no spaces. All right, so if we want to make sure our step function waits before executing the next step, we must enable wait for task to complete. If we do not leave this enabled, it's going to immediately run the next step without waiting for this to be done. Now, what I've experienced myself is having this enabled, the glue job is not actually telling our step function that it has been completed or failed, and the state machine ends up hanging. However, I'm going to show you how to solve this by making sure that your step function role is set to the right IAM policy. All right, so my next step, I wanted to send a message to my SNS topic when it is done. So I'm just going to find the SNS service here and find the publish and then drag that onto the canvas. And now we're going to have to set our SNS topic we want to send a notification to, right? So under API parameters, we're going to choose the topic name. So the one I want to write to is called glue jobs. And, and that's all we need to set. All right, that looks good. All right, one thing I wanted to mention here is that we can add error handling onto our step function for our glue job. So if we click on the glue job step, now, if we go to error handling here, we can add a retrier with some custom logic. So for example, if we specify a specific error or how many retry attempts we want to implement with an optional back off rate as well, we can add a lot of control to the state machine on how we want to execute in the event of a failure. Right. So for this demo, I'm not going to have an error handling retry enabled. So I'm just going to remove this. And now we're going to go to next. All right, so now what we see is our definition file that has been generated. So if you did not develop your step function visually and you want to start a glue job, you need to make sure that you're using the glue start run dot sync command. And this is what will allow us to start our step function, All right? So this looks good. And now if we go to the bottom, we can hit next. And now we have to provide a name to our state machine. I'm just going to call it trigger ETL job. Now you can let step function create a new role for you, but I know a lot of people want to manage these permissions as infrastructure as code. So you might want to select an existing one, for example, or create it through the IAM console. So you know exactly what policies are being assigned to your role. So in that case, I'm going to walk you through what the permissions we need. So let's just go to choose an existing role and we're going to use my glue invoker role. So let's just head over to IAM to see the policies that are connected to this role. All right, so I'm in the IAM console for this role. And as you can see, I've attached three policies. So I've added one policy to invoke a glue job, one to be able to publish to my SNS topic, and one in the event I wanted to trigger Lambda functions.
However, for the sake of this demo, what's most important to show you is the permissions that we need for invoking our glue job successfully. So there are four actions that we need to include here. So I got these roles from the step function documentation page. So under the AWS glue, in order to run a job here, we need these four actions. So we need to have start job run, get job run, get job runs, and batch stop job run. So the mistake I made is I just included glue start job run without these three here. So that allows you to start the job successfully. However, this does not allow you to get a call back when the job has either failed or completed successfully. So your state machine will hang. So it's very important to include these three other actions as well into your policy. All right. So now that you've seen how I've come up with this policy, let's head back over to finish setting up our state machine. All right, great. So I've selected my existing role that I just showed you, and you can enable it logging if you want to have the ability to see any error messages associated with it in CloudWatch logs. For the sake, I'm just going to go ahead and create my state machine. So now that my state machine has been created, let's just give this a run to make sure it works. So I'm going to hit the start execution button. Now you see this optional input parameter box. This box is very important if you want to pass parameters to your glue job and make it more dynamic. However, in my case, it's very simple ETL where there's no input parameters. So we can either leave this with the default statement or remove it and then just give it a run. Great. So now that our glue job is running, we're just gonna wait for it to complete. Great, so my boxes went from blue to green indicating that the state machine has been executed successfully for both steps. So we see that our glue job has successfully run and then it sent a notification to our SNS topic. So if we go to my email account, I just got a new email called glue job notification. And if we click on it, we see we get a payload that's been passed to our state machine directly to our SNS topic, which tells us that our job run state has succeeded. And we know that this job has finished successfully. Great, so I hope this video was helpful and you now know how to use AWS step functions to trigger glue job successfully. Thanks so much for watching and if you learned something or think this video will be helpful for others, please hit that like button. If you want to support my channel and you have extra Google Play credits lying around or you're just feeling generous, you can always send me a super thanks which will go a long way to support this channel. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing for more videos on data engineering on AWS. Thanks again and see you next time.